My name is Rhapsody, welcome back to Monster Train with a random primary and allied clan, as well as coming at level 14. Let's get goodness, come on, and hey, no Melting Remnant. <laughs> it's not that I don't like Melting Remnant, it's just I've had a lot of them recently, and uh, oof, whoo, they are... It feels like I still have a lot to learn about them, and I would uh, sometimes like to learn a little bit more about that off camera, maybe, or uh, on stream, maybe, before you know diving back in and making similar mistakes. Winged Steel is incredible, so good. Uh, Seraph the Diligent is going to be devouring our spells. I'll take the spikes. We need some early damage in this deck, and just the two Steel Enhancers isn't really going to cut it. Great, that's fine. So effectively, the spikes on my uh, champion unit here are just going to cancel out the 10 armor of the enemy, so... Uh, I might as well set up on a floor... Oh, God, really? I might as well set up so that I have the ability to put a attacker behind as well. I mean... Do I just pop down the extra trains? I guess. So we're gonna take two, two, four, four, eight, thirteen, thirteen damage to this. Honestly, not that bad. Could be a lot worse. It's That's fine. Now we'll only take two damage to that top line. Although I think I, yeah, I wasted one of my, one of my lances there. All right. Let's go for a Steel Enhancer on the Protected Unit and then a heal as well as the extra draw for the next turn. So far I've taken 11 damage in this fight and yeah, it does look like that's all we're gonna take. Cool. 11 damage for a unit draft, 100% you best believe I'm going to go for that, especially when I haven't necessarily got a champion that is going to be scaling for damage for us. Razor Sharp Edge, two Seal Enhancers. We have two Seal Enhancers in the deck already, which means that one of the best units that I can pick up here is the... Uh, well, actually, pretty much any multi-strike unit is one of the best units I can pick up here. I'll take a Razor Sharp Edge because we have the ability to use the Razor Sharp Edges as well as the Seal Enhancers to upgrade... Uh, in combat, and I'm never going to run out of health for the Razor Sharp Edge's negative 2 HP if I'm constantly putting Steel Enhancers on as well. Uh, Titan's Tooth? I mean, we do have two Offering Tokens as well as the Wing and Steel, so we're definitely going for an Offering Synergy there. Hmm. Huh. See, the thing is, I probably want to save most of the health for restoring my Sentient, but all of these provide the... Well, except the Awoken Hollow, right? I want the health for my Sentient, which means the Awoken Hollow is a little worse. And then the Thorn Hollow and the Husk Hermit both solve the same problem the Sentient is already solving of damage in an area of effect. That's really unfortunate. That's like three of the only units I think I could have been offered at the moment where there is no option I'm in, like interested in taking. Uh, Cold Calia would be... I mean, Cold Calia is sweep as well. Yikes. I actually think we're going for early spell upgrades. I very, very rarely do this. Okay, let's give Holdover to Titan's Tooth. As well as maybe plus 10 magic power to it? Yeah, more instantaneous damage. Uh, then we will lower the cost of the focused growth. And I'm going to purge a card as well. So that we can more regularly get back to the offering tokens as well as the Titan's Tooth. I'm going to have to play the Titan's Tooth on any turn that I don't get the offering token in hand. In the next area, there is... I mean, there's a Stygian unit next to artifacts. Unless I get a unit draft here, I'm probably not going for the Merchant of Steel in the next area anyway. Not a unit draft. And Spikes 3 is totally fine by me. If I have Spikes, you die before I have to hit you back. It's great. Hmm. 
Got to get some extra damage out there somewhere. Got a poison Lance on the top line. Go Train Steward. See if we get another Train Steward, maybe. Okay, we do. <clears throat> That's good enough to catch out that line. All right, we got to start getting the holdover as well as that is going to kill them before they get to the top. There we go. Offering token on the Titan's Tooth. Great. Let's go for... I mean, double restore, probably. Triple restore, even. Nice. <clears throat> Almost enough to get it by itself, but we will have a yeah Titan's Tooth guaranteed this turn. Huh. I was really pinning my hopes on that Titan's Tooth. We still only took four damage at the end there. Six, sorry, four from the hit and then two from the spikes. So it's fine, but huh. I thought that was going to be a little better. Uh, another focus growth. Honestly, focus growth giving us extra draw next turn is really, really useful here. If I just make both of these focus growths cost zero, then I think that's all of the healing the deck might need. Uh, Guardian Stone. No, no. Getting armor things doesn't necessarily make that much sense here. Unless we do it as a secondary floor and we're setting up a uh, incant stack floor. But then like my bottom floor is the sentient so that it can... So that it can reduce the amount of enemies on the field at any one time. Just one Titan Sooth and one Sentient is not enough. But I don't think we have anything to support currently taking a, a Guardian Stone there. Alright. Artifact finds a Sting spell every turn. Uh... It's a little rough. Because yes, it's an extra card played for the sake of the Winged Steel, and yes, it's an extra card drawn the turn after as well, but eventually if I'm drawing only Stings, and as the fights go on, I'm going to have that be more of a problem for us, life becomes real hard. But maybe that's fine. Maybe that's fine, because that does give us a direction. Gives us a very clear direction of where we're going. Uh, Siren of the Sea, putting that behind the Sentient. How do I feel about that? Much better, I think. Alright, so let's go for a Spell Rail Spike here and get a Restore out of the deck now that I have the other two mega buffed heals. So now we're looking for Magic Power Upgrades. Uh, we're looking for Relics. There are so many Relics that really help us here, so... We're probably going to prioritize our picks in terms of, like, how many Hurzel's Hordes and how many Merchants of Trinkets we can get. That That's a while down the road, though. <clears throat> Hopefully, I get a challenge that I can afford to take that will give me a Relic as a reward. Because there are so many Relics right now that help us ridiculously. I would love to be casting on that floor right now. I just definitely cannot afford to. Go Sting into Train Stewards have to go somewhere. We can now Offering Token on the bottom floor. Yeah, because we're looking for the Titan's Tooth. Might as well get that damage out there early. Go for another heal. Nice. Siren of the Sea would really like a multi-strike. Incant Triggers plus Stings together are a really, really good combo. So this is our big hitter. This is our area sweeper. I mean, it kind of goes together at the moment. Kind of. Oh, that's annoying. Didn't get an offering for the Titan's Tooth there. Let's just plop down another train steward so I don't have to draw back into it. Thinning out the deck effectively in play. Hmm. 
I've actually straight up got to murder all of those. I'm offering token through again. I mean, the health on the sentient needs to be saved here. I'm going to heal it, a bit of regen as well. So we're looking for a... There we go. Focus growth this turn. That's exactly what I was hoping for. Still no Titans to fair. So I'm going to double sting on the top line so you only get one hit against the last shot of the pyre. And then I'm going to start preparing effectively to do the same to this line. Yeah, I did not know I was going to be hasted past in this. Huh. Guess I should try and keep that in mind for the future. Okay. Uh, let's go single sting for the double draw, single sting again. And then the rest of these just get cast on the midline, I think. Yeah, just as buffs on our backliner. Specifically with the enhancements, the Siren of the Sea is growing at like a very respectable rate. Very, very pleased with it. That was actually surprisingly close as well at the end there. I had to cast all of my... No, most of my spells there before I was actually winning on that floor. Which tells me that my boss kill ability is not good enough yet. Oh, don't make me. Don't, though. There's a lot of spells. I didn't ask for this. The game gave it to me. We're going to try and walk the line of being like a Sting, Encant, Spreading Spore deck. We need extra energy to be able to cast all of this right now. We already draw a lot. Uh, okay, duping things or removing things. I could dupe a... Oh, no, no. I just realized we just picked up Spreading Spores. There's a Merchant of Magic here. We have to go to the Merchant of Magic. Okay, what if I gave holdover to an offering token? So every turn I'm doing the... Yeah, I'm going to do that. Looking for double stack. Oh my god. I mean, <laughs> how do you argue when the game gives it to you? The game is just like, here's the run on a silver platter. The more I try and struggle against that, because I've done it a lot in the past, is like, you know, trying to battle against what the run is trying to give me and try and define it elsewise. Uh, the more you battle against it, the more you just have a bad run. Kind of got to lean into what they give you. This is what they've given me. Numbers enemies gain multi-strike. Is that a problem for me? No, it's actively helpful. And it's an artifact. A uh, a challenge I can afford to take, and it gives us an artifact. I couldn't be happier. We're set up on the bottom floor here because I want the Absolvers to die very quickly. I did give hold over to one of the... Yeah, I gave hold over to one of the... Sorry, I was very confused as to uh, whether or not I actually went through with that plan. Glad that I did, though. Right. Yeah, it looks like this is totally fine. I love the hold over Titan Sooth every single turn. It is invalidating the spikes on the Sentient a little. But now the Sentient is just here to defend the Siren of the Sea, effectively. Go for a Spring Spore first. Offering on the Titan's Tooth. Draw two extra cards from the Winged Steel. Gosh, Winged Steel is so good. It's like really, really, really good. It might not be broken. It might be one of the cases where I can actually look at a Relic and go, this is good, but I don't think it should be patched. Glad to be able to say that at the absolute least. Keep getting all the encant triggers off while we can. If 
Plus, obviously, I'm still looking for, yeah, more spreading spores copies. Okay, then Sting, Sting, and offering the Titan's Tooth for the win. I mean, we'd already won, but let's run up the score a little, you know? So I think we might... I think we might be done? Enemies gain negative one damage. That is important early to not have because I need Absolvers to still hit the Sentient, but it saves us a decent amount of HP. I think as I continue cutting cards from this deck and the focus grows can, uh, like uh, constitute more of the deck, this will be less necessary. I'm going to take the money. Cycle of Life is appealing, but is it necessary at all? I don't think it is. I think I have... Do I? How many spells do I have that really want upgrades at this point? It would actually just be the Cycle of Life. That's fine. That's fine. I can take a spell that wants upgrades. Apply Frozen to a card in hand. Apply Silence to enemy units. Silence to enemy units when I'm going up against Seraph the Diligent. Makes a little bit more sense. But it thickens up the deck and denies me 10 goals. It makes a little bit of sense because Seraph the Diligent is the only fight where... Ooh, 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 ooh. Double removal on this side as well as merchant upgrades? Or do I want to dupe something? I could happily dupe the spreading spores right now, but... I think I'm comfortable with removing cards. That will also increase the rate at which we draw spreading spores. Uh... Thank you. Very glad to have actually gotten something useful there. You know, if there is any run where I can probably afford to take Bone, Rattla uh, Bone Rattler with me the entire time, it's probably this one. Let's take it. Let's make Bone Rattler golden. I wouldn't be surprised to see that event buffed. It is almost always an event that you get to and go, Ugh, this event, <laughs> fine. I guess. Uh, enemy center with armor 15. So you are the master of light. You have sweep. Honestly, not that big of a problem. Hopefully I get to my titan's teeth and stuff soon, though. Ooh, you put out an 85 on turn one. I mean, we are on floor five, so I, I understand it. I recognize it. We are almost able to kill the Master of Light here. That is very good for us. Let's go. Sting. Um, focus. Focus growth. Frozen Lance. There we go. Titan's Tooth. Great. I figure the Titan's Tooth... Yeah, the, the Frostbite will kill that Master of Light, so I didn't throw any damage up here. And obviously, it was going to get us a Collector. Okay. We play the Bone Rattler for nothing right now. Well, I mean, I guess it is an Encant Trigger at least. Zero cost Encant Trigger at the end of a turn. Okay, again, got to throw this. Hey, hang on, how this floor doing? Bad. Got it. I might have to try and use the Titan's Tooth here again next turn, and it, it might not even be enough. So what, Titan's Tooth is 15 damage instantly, 10 damage delayed, so it's 25 damage overall. So if I use a Frozen Lance here, then it's enough. Honestly, this will be worth it for the Relic. Right. You're not getting any HP back this entire time, so just throwing stings at you should be enough. Okay, 
store. Whole floor is already taken care of, so Frozen Lance, Frozen Lance. And then let's get the extra draw next turn as well. Final thing, these two stings up there. I mean, this enemy can't even deal the damage to us, so. Two stings down here, and then spreading spores, spreading spores, and just continue throwing offerings until we get bored of them. Great. Honestly, yes, this has spreading spores in the deck, but spreading spores is not most of this deck. Most of this deck is the, the Titan's Tooth holds over the encant triggers on the multi-strike Siren of the Sea, and I like it that way. I am very pleased that it is uh, balancing that way because, as I mentioned before, Sirens, Sirens, sorry, the, uh, the Spreading Spores is very much, uh, especially now that you can re-roll in shops as well for upgrades, is very, very powerful in a way that may be too much. I don't know how you nerf it, though. I really don't. Maybe make it not add an extra copy, but have higher stats. But that's also dangerous, I imagine. Uh, Engraft. If I had a Rejuvenate trigger as well, I think I'd take the Engraft here. But it's just another card chunking up my hand right now. Cuttle Hex. I do like Cuttle Hex. Having an extra card at the end of each turn, just held. It's real nice, but I also have a lot of draws, so I don't think... And I think, you know, I might, as I cut more cards from this deck, have pretty consistent draw out of all of the stings, just drawing 10 cards a turn, so I don't necessarily think I'd need that. Uh, I could get more upgrades for the Sirens of the Sea. Is Siren of the Sea rather singular? No, but this way I could disclude two cards from the deck. Ah, but this has relic uh, artifacts. Yeah, I'm going for the artifacts. I'm looking for sting relics, as you might imagine. 50% uh, chance to apply silence to an enemy unit when it enters your train. I very rarely get that, but every time I get it, I'm very impressed with it. Ooh. Yeah, I'm going to make the Siren of the Sea just bigger. Bigger now. And then, I think it's just time to start discluding cards from the deck again. Let's get a Frozen Lance out of here. So making it bigger by base, because I draw it in my opening hand, makes it much more resilient initially. And also makes it, you know, less likely to die to sweeps and stuff like that. Not that that's necessarily going to happen, but could. At least it could of. Offering through a Titan's Tooth. Oh my god, offering Titan's Tooth and Spreading Spores on the first turn. As well as two buffs for the... That was a perfect opening hand there. That's basically as good as we could have had that. Very pleased. Let's go offering token through a Titan Tooth here. Uh, you'll die. So, yeah, 19, 18, you'll die before you get to the top. Ah, you've been silent, so you're not even going to get the incant triggers. Perfect. I'll actually have the ability to do those myself this time. Alright. Yeah, you're already dead, as I suspected would be the case. Just had to make absolutely certain that I hadn't miscounted in some way or just not accounted for something. Yeah, this is very much one floor solution. I do like one floor solutions. They are not always the way that you should play. And I, I feel like I am getting better at recognizing that and getting better at uh, having contingency plans. I mean, literally the last episode was named Contingency Planner and I think it was a pretty good example of it. But I also do feel self-conscious now when I do build a one-floor kill. To be fair, these extra spells have been supplemental secondary floor kills right now, right? And a lot of Stygian runs do run like that. You've got your one floor. In a lot of Stygian floors, it's like one incant stack floor, which I guess is kind of the case here, but not really. Gosh, yeah, the Siren of the Sea is getting serious. Good stats right there. Okay. That cycle. Here are all these stings. Come on. Uh, next area. Next area, right? Yeah, Merchant Trinkets. Next area, we might find some sting relics finally, and these stings will actually be valuable. 
or we can find an Encantria thing, or we can find Spikes things. There are so many dedicated relics that support our build right now, is uh, effectively what I want to be saying here. That we should be able to find one. Regen supports our build right now as well. Almost anything that synergizes with spells cast. The Anvil supports our build right now. Just because we play the Titan Sooth every turn, it would make every other card in our hand cost zero. Yeah, except for the cycle of life, but we would have the ability to play that, right? Oh, I love it when they die to Frostbite. Mm, channel Song, no, won't have the ability to draw anything. Gifts for a guard, draw three, <laughs> three spells and enhance them with consume, plus 20 magic power and zero cost. That's a way to get some very expensive stings. And Ice and Pion, no, we're setting up on the bottom floor consistently here. It's, uh, I mean, it's not energy anymore. I think it's draw. I think, like, we are full up on draw, but at the very least, this will initially, in the first cycle, get us off the ground faster. Spells gain an extra upgrade slot. Units gain an extra upgrade slot. Ooh. I want both of those. But they're also not dedicated good for this build. I've already got the doors and the hook upgraded, and I don't necessarily want either in this deck. So we will get the 120 health, 40 spikes champion. Spells gain. Uh, we should we should decide where we're going down here, right? Hellvent gives us the ability to dupe any card except for the champion. So I could get an extra upgrade on the spreading spores and the titan's tooth, and then dupe either of them. Or, I could go Siren of the Sea with the units gained an extra upgrade slot, remove two cards, get the Pyre Remains, and possibly something from the Merchant of Trinkets. Removing two cards is pretty good right now as well. Specifically, the two Restores. They are way worse versions of the Focus Growth. They are just chunking up my hand. So I think I will go Removal in the next area, and I think if I am going Removal in the next area, I might as well go Pyre Stone Housing for the possibility of making the Siren of the Sea even better. We could get another multi-strike there. We could get... Honestly, quick wouldn't be awful. Uh, would it be awful? It might be awful. Quick is awful. Never mind. <laughs> Just instantly turn on it. I'll take 60 damage this turn, casually. Hold over a Titan's Tooth here. Honestly, for the 100, more than anything else there. Trying as hard as I can to keep the Sentient alive. Which is seeming difficult. Yeah, especially against... I mean, against these, at the absolute least, I do have the stings. So sting, sting, get them. Let's go focus growth as well. Spreading spores as well. Uh, offering... Fine, I'll offering a Titan's Tooth here on the top floor so we don't have to take so much damage to you. We don't really have a way to reduce that damage any further, I don't think, though. Especially because focus growth and spreading spores here on the bottom is extremely impactful. Now that I can actually reliably Titan Sooth on the bottom floor though, we're not really going to be taking any damage anymore. 
But I will still make sure that my regen gets higher even here. There we go. Spread, spread, spread. And we'll even give you the initial heal. Make sure to offering token through a Titan's Tooth. And then draw an extra card next turn. Although we already had 10. And you know what? That one's good enough. So this boss being silenced is ridiculous because it has a revenge trigger which increases its damage. That's its only thing is it has a revenge trigger that increases its damage as well as a lot of health. So if it doesn't have that revenge trigger, <laughs> just laugh at it effectively. Uh, yeah, I'm fine. Thank you. Okay, so now I'm looking for the same thing that I was looking for in the previous area. Good relics. Also, multi-strike. Quick, eh, it's okay. Stings gain, plus 10 magic power and piercing is great. Reroll. X cost cards, gain plus three to the X value when played. I mean, we have the Bone Rattler. I could also take the Vapor Funnel and play the Bone Rattler for as much as I can. Actually, I could take Vapor Funnel and first Hell Pack. Yeah, let's do that. So, this will kill stragglers very, very well. Which is something we kind of do need. And then I will give the Siren of the Sea plus 10 damage initially. So, every turn we can have a spell to burn pretty easily. It's going to be the Sting... Really? Like, it feels like 100% of my enemies are getting silenced. I'm appreciative, don't get me wrong. It just feels like that's not supposed to be how that one go down. Uh, okay, I'll bring token through. You know what? This is probably the best turn I have for it. Bone rattle. So now anyone that gets to the top floor with less than 50 HP, we already beat him. This also means if Seraph summons any light wings on any of the floors, they just go to the top floor of their days and then they die. Uh, let's not consume that. Let's consume the sting. We're going to be consuming a lot of stings here. This is... The thorn fruit is actually like a really good counter to Seraph the Diligent. It's just... It can also be a really good counter to a lot of things, including good deck building. Thankfully, not the case here. Oh, I, I beg of you to go past me. I entreat you, please. Okay, spreading and then focused. I'm not offering through a vengeful shot. Because when you play them, they just discard anyway. Let's see if I can perfect this fight. I love that that whole floor is already taken care of. Okay. So an offering on the Titan's Tooth. Let's throw away the Vengeful and get more spores out there. The Gilded Wing actually is looking a little healthy right now. We might have to throw a Sting its way. Right, you take 9 damage and then 8 damage, so 17. So yeah, you will die the last shot of the pyre already. This is good for me because the more of those that I can cast here on the bottom floor, the more damage I can get off on the boss effectively. Uh, hey, focus growth. I've been waiting for one of those. Okay. There are so many spreading spores in this deck that I think I can now get one of them consumed. Without being too sad about it, at least. That's another thing. Like, the, the Seraph the Diligent is helping me to manage out the extra spreading spores and the extra stings. Frankly, Seraph, it's your fault that I ended up taking the Thorn Fruit because I probably wouldn't have taken it otherwise. Oh, I love it when it's piercing and it hits an enemy with like a hundred armor. Oh, so good. Really proves itself in that moment. Let's 
Siren of the Sea has also really proven itself here. Doesn't need that much to become insane. Right, it's offering through a Titan's Tooth. Throw away Vengeful Shard and then just continue on the spores. All right. Seraph, hit me. I love that I just heal back up to full HP every single time. And don't even attack back. Oh, it's perfect. <sighs> Good run right there. That was, a, that was a pretty easy Ascension 14, if I have to say so myself. Now, I do know that apparently Ascension 16 is a sticking point for a lot of people, making everything a lot harder. Uh, but let's have a look at what the Ascension 15 modifier is about to be. Add a copy of the Allied Clan, start a card to your starting deck, as you might imagine. So now we have two levels of that. We also got the Bone Rattler to be gold there. Not that many cards left that I have to make gold at this point. Still four different colorless cards, clanless cards rather, that have to be made that. I'm amazed that I've only got one, or, or rather a Covenant one Hellhorned lead Umbra follow victory. Yeah. This is why I think I'm amazed by that, because my Umbra lead Hellhorn follower is on 12. For the moment, though, my name is Min Rhapsody. The name of the game has been Monster Train. Hopefully you've been enjoying yourselves. There's a playlist in the description down below with all my content on this game, past, present, and future, and hopefully we'll see you next time.